Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, let's start at the beginning. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion, champion for the divine feminine. It's my mouthful. I recently got called a guardian of the feminine, which feels very interesting to try that on as a new outfit, as it were. And this is my daily broadcast. Um, these are called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Art. Initially on Facebook Live and then later on on YouTube, so in case you're watching it there, that's where it started. Fair enough? And today is number, and I do these every day by the way, so as I'm over a year now, this is number 377. And today's topic is real relationship is not a numbers game. And you may already get where I'm going with this, but I'll explain anyway, just in case um, you don't really know what it means. <laughs> so I'll put it into some context. And the reason I'm saying this is because, um, well, I was on the phone with a matchmaker earlier today. Yes, I have a matchmaker scouting for me. Not, I'm not a client of theirs. They're using me for their clients, which is so interesting. Um, and I was a coach, just said I would offer my services as, but that would be a whole other conversation and a whole different uh, setup. So today's um, inspiration was about this feeling that for some, not all, but for some of the services out there, put it that way, it is a numbers game. They're just putting people together and hoping that one of the, that it's almost like if you throw things at the wall enough time, something will stick, like bad spaghetti. Actually, good spaghetti does stick. <laughs> but you get my point. It's this sense of just repeating the same thing again and again, hoping something will work out. Now, since I just said that, I know I've got to use the quote from um, was it Albert Einstein. Yes, it was. I'm thinking of somebody else's quote for a second there which basically is the definition of insanity, is doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. So if you're going out on date after date after date after date as a repeat cycle without changing anything, if you think it's going to be changing, if you think, if you think without changing anything along the way, the result will change, you are basically insane. Sorry to break that to you. I know mean, <laughs> that wasn't very subtle. I want to make, make sure you get the point. The the mindset of these apps and websites and services and matchmakers is basically around the idea of hoping you find a right match based on some criteria, because it is an algorithmic system. Yes, it's a system of algorithms. But matchmakers, same as dating apps, which are basically based on the ideas of matchmaking, put together specifications and data based on what you've input and try to find your match with somebody else, which sounds mechanical because it is. And these systems are still a game of numbers. And it is a game where they hope it'll match up, but there's no guarantees. And frankly, unless you have lots and lots of years to play with this and you don't really care about what happens and your money to spend and you're not attached to any of this stuff, then go ahead and do that. But if you're like most of my clients, and me included, to do that sort of habit to continue they've got the dating and and recycling and do the same thing again and again it isn't thrilling it isn't appealing it isn't it isn't fulfilling and it doesn't provide results so I think you get my point where I'm going with this well let me go let me let me exaggerate one more time let's take one more step which is you could have as much luck if not more luck going through your friends on Facebook to find somebody by random gambling and going click, see if that one works, click, see if that one works, click, see if that one works, then you will if you go through some of the other systems. It really is that arbitrary sense. And the results aren't what you want. If you, again, if you're like my clients, nor if you're like me as well, you'd rather have a um, clearer vision, a clearer intention, a clearer idea of what you want, and you'd also want to have a better sorting system, as it were, a better, better way of divining, finding your way through to the one you want to be with. If you've been watching my broadcast for the last year and a bit, you know that's kind of where I speak to. And so I'm going to put that in this, in this context to give you some key um, suggestions, indicators, and guidance. Um, if you're using the dating apps, yes, even the dating apps, all the dating sites, matchmaking sites, matchmaking apps, etc., 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 and matchmaking people, rather, or services, those are all tools. Those are just simply... Um, 
different avenues to drive down, as it were. If you're looking to get to San Francisco, and that and San Francisco represents your um, ideal partner you want to be with, and you're in LA right now, there are several different ways. Well, let's make it New York. Let's make it New York. It's got more divergence there. So you're going from LA to New York. There are 17 different ways, and if you want to deal with the different side roads and, and circuit, circuits and roads and going by plane and by train and all the other things, there's a plethora, a plethora, in fact, of different ways of getting there. So the point is, it's more about knowing you want to get to New York than it is about the vehicle to get you there. Let me say the piece again so you can understand what I'm talking about here. There are many, many ways of getting from... No, let me back up a second. Let me put another way. Recontextualize that for a second. Once you're clear about where you want to go, say New York, then the ways you can get there are multi multitudinous. Another big word. Plethora of multitudinous. I'll throw these big words out there today. So what it comes back to is it isn't about the vehicle. It's about the goal. Now, this is going to sound a bit law of attraction based because it, it is kind of based on law of attraction, which I've spoken to a few times before in my broadcast because it does tie together. Is as um, so I'm, just bringing up, I'm looking to recontextualize this in the context of this piece. If you know what you want clearly, then the way to get there, not so much doesn't matter, but it's almost automatic. So, for example, if you know what you're looking for in a relationship and romance, and I talked about this yesterday in the idea about getting busy in life and living your life, instead of waiting at home for that person to show up and twiddling your thumbs hoping they'll show up, it's like, no, get out there and live life and know what you want to do, be active. In this context, what I'm talking about is knowing clearly what your vision is, your intention is, and I'll get to that in a second, supports you being able to meet the person you're looking for. And wherever they're based, there'll be ways that the universe will conspire to connect you with them. And it might be through a smartphone app or a Facebook connection or a bump across, you bump somebody across the street or you knock into them in Starbucks. I mean, it can be that random, in quotes, but it's actually more specific. So the key to this whole process isn't about the vehicle to get there, which, again, dating apps, matchmakers, all these different things could provide. It's about knowing what you really want up front. Your vision, your intention, your image of what you want, your feeling, tone, established creation of what you want to have in a relationship is where it starts. And that's where you eliminate the numbers game. So let me give you a couple of pointers to that before I tell you how you can find out and work in with me. Yes, I'm promoting myself in this broadcast. So there, I've let it out of the bag. <laughs> so what your vision is about for a relationship is something that you create initially in here and here because it's a vision that's mind, mind expressed but heart felt and heart generated but also it is something that you can visualize well let me back up a second vision boards and visioning type things are a very eye level seriously modality but if you're not a primarily a visual person if you're more of a kinesthetic person or an auditory person You'll make sure that your vision, in quotes, I'm using that as an amorphous word, or a more um, generality versus saying it's because something you see, has to be something that evokes in you a feeling. So you could have a vision board that is a picture, but if you're more kinesthetic, it's more about what those pictures make you feel, or how that, ha or the way you respond to how you feel things in there, um, that really speaks to what you're looking for. Sorry. Looking, I'm using visual terms, I'm visuals, I'm using that term. Let me try that one again. <laughs> the vision board you create, which is a pictorial image, poster board, picture, that sort of stuff, I teach this in one of my programs. Or I should say, I document how to do it in one of my programs. It's online, so I don't actually teach you directly, but you can look at it there. That image you create, if you're a kinesthetic person, is created from a place of how it makes you feel. The kinesthetic connection is inside of you. It is that sense of feeling in love and feeling connected and feeling that romance, that connect, that power, that all those things of relationship expressed through the pictures you see on the vision board. If you're an auditory person, which most people are an auditory with something else, but if you are have to be an auditory person, I'm using the three main NLP modalities in this place just as a way of referencing how most people take in information. 
Again, so if you're a visual person, you're taking information visually and you like to use more visual terms like I've just been doing, as you noticed. Um, if you're more kinesthetic, you'll use more feeling words. So when you meet somebody, you'll know that they make you feel good. You'll also notice that, um, you'll notice the temperature, you'll notice the sense of touch, you'll notice all different things, that's the, that's the kinesthetic component. If you're a, so if you're an auditory person, this is where the sound comes in, and this is the sound level where it's almost like you have to, you have to hear the, the, um, the vision board. In a sense, what I would recommend, and this is something that I know will help you, and I've done this for some clients, by the way, is if you have a clear auditory sense about what you want, in fact, I should say you have an auditory way of expressing and receiving information, so you listen and you hear things very well, and you remember things as words, you use a lot of terms that are also auditory. So that rings a bell. That, that, that's a clunk for me, like you are resonating, so you know what the words that are auditory. Then doing a vision board as an auditory exercise is possible. However, the way I would recommend doing it, you just start with a vision board, a visual description, and then you record your description of it verbally. Didn't think of that one, did you? If you're, a vision, if you're an auditory person, recording the vision board as an auditory description, as an audio description, would be a powerful place for you to listen to, to hear it back to yourself. And yet you can play it in your ear when you're riding your bike or walking over for a walk or driving to work. This actually is more powerful in some ways for some people because when you're a visual, you have to stop and look at it. So the visual board is out in front of you and you've got to see it in front of you. If you're a kinesthetic, you've got to take a look at it and then embody the feelings of what it makes you feel like. But when you're auditory based, if you record your description of what that looks like, then you create a, a um, A background track in the fact you can actually play it back to yourself and listen to it whenever you want and that gives you the the energy to drive towards relationship now this is just a taste by the way of some of the things I do with my clients this these three ways of visual or kinesthetic or auditory will help you get clear about what you want and getting back to the beginning about the numbers game is once that part of you is engaged and you're feeling into or you're seeing or you're hearing what it is you want to create then the world around you will start to align to that vision so whether you then go back to your dating apps, matchmakers, dating sites, Facebook, <laughs> whatever you use to get there, will actually be more accurately guiding you to where you want to go. When you've done that vision board, as I mentioned in the beginning about the New York LA thing, once you know what, vision, what New York looks like or sounds like or feels like to you, using that rather bad metaphor, then the ways to get there will show up. So again, especially if, and this is important for the ladies especially, but for men it works too, but especially for you women watching this, Having that initial place to start from, the place that is attracting what you want. And I've talked about this before. So you know where you want to go, where you're, what you're looking for, and what your vision is about. Then you can go there more accurately, more clearly, and also more efficiently, and save a lot more time. The other part of this is, I'm going to make sure I'm not shooting myself in the foot by saying this. Ladies, the power you have is an attraction. I've said this before. In your feminine power, your feminine majesty, and we, men, men in the feminine can do this too, but it's more natural for women to do in the feminine. If you can start pulling in the vision of what you want to create, he will show up more easily. Meaning that he will find you once you're out in the world living your life. Not sitting at home, I talked about this yesterday, you need to get active. So watch yesterday's broadcast, that was 376. It's focused about what you need to do in your life to get out there to really attract the relationship. This is getting clear about what sort of relationship you want to attract. So it's a it's a next step, as it were, from yesterday's broadcast. That fits together rather well. Okay, good. Well, fits together rather well. <laughs> it this way, that was like fitting together. Yeah. Okay, you got my point. So <laughs> um, I think you got my point about this. Start with your vision first, and then you'll find the path to where you want to go. Reveal that you'll get to where you want to go. If this appeals to you and inspires you, I have a program online, which I'll tell you about if you want to find out more about it. But before, I'm not selling anything through this, this uh, broadcast. These are always informative, ideally, and, and inspirational. But I do always offer you an invitation to talk to me about what you're looking for. So if you're looking for this and you want some more help in this area, reach out to me. How you do that is on my website. My name, website is my name, barryselby.com. And on the left-hand side of the, of the menu bar is a button called Let's Chat. Click on that, sign up for this conversation, and we'll talk. It's 30 minutes of my time, a gift to you, complimentary, gratis, free, <laughs> where we'll talk. And I'll help you get clear about where you're going, what you're looking for, and if I can help you get there, great. And if I can't, you've got some keys and tips along the way. 
This broadcast, by the way, is my, as I mentioned at the beginning, 377th of my daily Facebook Live, so over a year's worth now, going for 400. You can find all my broadcasts sitting on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, or also on my YouTube channel, which will end up as well. And the, uh, the channel is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages of the Masculine. And also on my website, again, barryselby.com, you can find them on the video blog. On my website, you'll also find my book, my coaching, a lot of my recordings of interviews I've done before as well. So I've lots of stuff to peruse if you're interested. And with that, um, homework. Yes, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do give homework every, pretty much every time now. So I shall warn you before I started that there's going to be homework. If you choose, not required, but if you choose, you can, in fact, start leaning into this process. First of all, get clear about what's your primary modality. Are you a visual? Are you auditory? Are you kinesthetic? Which one of those three is your predominant way of taking information in? You'll notice by what you, how you say things, what words come up in your descriptions if they are more visual, auditory, kinesthetic words. When you do that, that'll give you a basis on which to build out your vision board. And as I mentioned in the broadcast, your vision board can be visual as a reference point if you're a visual person, auditory, by, sorry, kinesthetic by doing the vision board and then feeling into it, what it feels like for you to embody and take it on. And if you're auditory, vision board again, but this time you describe it to yourself, either you do it out loud, I did mention this earlier, but you can either do it one of two ways. One is you do it out loud, each time you look at the vision board, describe everything out loud so you hear it to yourself. Or if you want to make it more efficient or convenient, you can do the same thing but record it and then play it back to yourself at other times. That's a big win, by the way. For those of you who are auditory, you've never thought of this before, perhaps, it can change your life. Because vision boards are not just for relationships, they're for other things too. All right, that was a big teaching I just dropped in your lap, and that's your homework. So have fun with that. Um, if you haven't done a vision board before, I recommend it. If you want help in how to set one up, I can help you with that too. Reach out to me again, as I mentioned, and uh, get started. <laughs> if the summer's almost here, you want to be gonna have love in the summer, real love, not just a um, another cog in the wheel, another number. Try this on for size. I think you'll find your life will improve. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll be back in tomorrow, number 378. See what that topic's going to be. I don't don't plan ahead. But thanks for watching and thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.